Hello everyone, this is Professor Razia Sultana Sanadi. Today I will be showing you how to estimate the quantities of a steel roof truss. So before starting with the problem, let us uh, first discuss about the what are the what is a roof truss and what are the elements of a roof truss. Okay, so roof truss shed consists of timber or steel roof trusses supported over walls or pillars or columns uh, spaced at regular intervals. Over the trusses run the pullings and over the pullings roof covering is provided. Common rafters may also be provided over the pulleys over which battens are fixed to support the roof covering which are required speci specially in the case of tile or slat roof. Timber trusses are usually spaced 2.5 meters to 3 meters apart and steel trusses are spaced 3 meters to 4.5 meters apart. You can see here the isometric view of a roof truss shed showing its different parts. So it consists of principal rafters, ties, struts, ridge, pollens. Okay, so principal rafter. The principal rafter is the top inclined, uh, top inclined member of the truss extending from the ridge to the eaves. Okay, it is also called as a top cord. They support the roof covering through the purlins. They are mainly compression members. So, uh, principal rafters are the members that are extending from the ridge to the eaves. Okay. Next is ties. Ties are tension members. Next, struts. Struts are compression members of the trust. Purlins, as you can see, these are the purlins running transverse to the direction of the truss. Purlins are structural members which are supported uh, supported on the principal rafter and which run transverse to the truss. They support the roof covering either directly or through the help of the rafters. <coughs> principal rafter, uh, principal rafter is the main component. Then rafters provide support to the sheathing. Ridge, ridge or ridge line uh, is the line joining the vertices. Ridge or ridge line is the line joining the vert vertices <coughs> of the transverse of the uh, of the trusses. Specially, uh, special forms of ridge of roof covering materials are uh, available. So eaves, eaves, the bottom edge of the inclined roof surface, the bottom edges are called as eaves. Eaves are provided so that the water that falls on the uh, falls on the trusses, okay, uh, will not directly fall on the supports. Okay, the eaves are the extra portion of the uh, truss that is being extended beyond beyond the support so that whatever the water or uh, rain water falls on the truss doesn't fall directly on the uh, supports or walls okay that is all about the truss let us start with the problem now let us start with the problem now so the specifications given are prepare a detailed estimate of a roof shed of GI sheet supported over steel trusses and purlins from the given drawing. I'll be showing you the drawing. The effective span of the truss is 12 meters and the spacing of the truss is 3 meters and inside length of the shed is 21 meter. You can see here they have given the plan of the shed okay where the if the effective span is 12 meter it's shown here and then the span of the truss is 21 meters each truss is spaced at 3.5 meters you can see there are 1 2 3 4 
and five number of trusses totally so here they have shown the section of one side of the truss this is the section for the one side of the truss okay next this is the plan of the base this base they have shown the plan over here and plan of one uh, connection they have shown here okay so next the problem follows us at the end of the shed there will be cable walls to support the pollens the roof covering will be of 24 beta plus g that is 0.63 mm galvanized corrugated sheets all steel works shall be painted with two coats of paint all the set plates are 8 mm thick so now let us start with the problem this is the measurement sheet okay details of the measurement sheet and calculation of quantities uh, the tabular column follows serial number particulars of items of work number length breadth quantity weight per unit from the steel table total quantity or weight in kg so first quantity will be doing calculating for steel work in one truss there are five number of trusses they are given the section of one truss that to one side of the truss so after calculating for one truss then we'll be multiplying it to the total number of trusses you can see here they have given the section of one side of the truss so uh, so this is the one side there will be a mirror image at the other side so we have to calculate for both the sides we have to consider both the sides of the trusses so first quantity is the principal rafter you can see here this is the principal rafter which is running inclined this is called as the principal rafter. So, prin uh, principal rafter is a double angled 75 by 50 by 8 mm and it is 7.6 meters long. So, it is given that the length is given as 7.6 meter. Principal rafter. It is double angled so we have to consider this two and one principal rafter at each side so one at this side and one at the other side so it will be number will be two so two into two total number will be four and the length I have given is 7.6 so multiplying the length with the number you get the quantity and then from the steel table for double angle 75 by 50 by 8 mm angle you get the weight per unit okay so you get it as from the steel table 7.4 so multiplying the quantity with the weight per unit you get the total quantity in kg that is 224.96 that is how you calculate the quantity of a principal rafter next is strut 75 by 50 by 8 mm angle strut that is 75 by 50 by 50 by 10 mm angle okay so you can see this is the strut okay which is 75 by 50 by 10 mm okay and its length is given as 1.2 meter okay so similarly you have to write in numbers too because one at each side right and left side of the uh, truss so two numbers length will be 1.2 meters multiplying the length with the number you get the quantity then from the steel table you get the weight per unit multiply the quantity with the weight you get the total quantity in kg that is 21.6 next is a strut 65 by 45 by 8 mm angle you can see here next strut is this is this next strut which is 65 by 45 by 8 mm so it's so its length is given as 0.55 meter so there is one strut of 65 by 45 by 8 mm over here of same length and there is another strut this one which is also of the same length so the total uh, number of struts, uh, struts will be two at each side so both the sides it will be four and the length is 0.55 so this will be two into two 0.55 you get the quantity then multiplying the quantity with the uh, weight per unit you get the total quantity as 14.08 
Next is the central suspender 50 by 50 by 6 mm. You can see this is the central suspender. Okay, this is the central suspender which is 50 by 50 by 6 mm. Its length given is 2.6 meter. Okay, so central suspender will be 1 because it's at this center center of both the uh, uh, truss, uh, tr sides of the trusses so the number will be 1 length given was 2.6 so you get the quantity as 2.6 again multiplying the uh, weight per unit you get the total quantity as 11.7 .7. next is cleats for pollens cleats for pollens the angles uh, angle section 75 by 75 into 6 mm you can see here they have shown here the cleats for cleat angle 75 by 75 by 8 mm. Okay, so it is 11 centimeter long. So how many cleat angles are there? Let us count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 at each side of the truss. So both the sides it will be totally 12 numbers. And its uh, length is 11 centimeters. So, 12 numbers, 0.11 cm, quantity will be 1.32, multiplying the quantity with the weight per unit that you get from the steel table, you get the total quantity as 11.748. Next is cleats at base, that is 75 by 75 by 10 mm. Cleats at base 75 by 75 by 10 mm. You can see this. These are the cleats at the base. Okay. So the plan of the base is shown here. The dimensions of the base plate are 30 by 30 by 12. Okay. So uh, this cleat angle is placed over this width. So there are two cleat angles. Okay. So, the dimension will be 0.3. Okay. So, cleat at the base, two cleat angles at each base. So, both the bases, totally, totally there will be four. Dimension was 0.3. So, you get the quantity as 1.2. Multiplying the quantity with the weight per unit, you get, uh, you get the total quantity as 13.2 kg. Then next are ties. Ties are uh, flat angle, flat numbers. Okay, so ties mean central uh, 50 into 8 mm. You can see here ties mean central that is uh, 50 into 50, uh, 50 into 8 mm. So this is the tie 15 to 8 mm, so which is of 4.8 meter long. So tie mean central uh, one at one at each side. So for length is 4.8 meter. You get the quantity as 9.6, uh, and then the weight per unit for the flat section uh, 15 to 8 mm, you get 3.1. Next is multiplying the quantity with the weight you get 29.76 kg. Then ties main side 80 into 6 mm. Okay. So ties main side. So you can see here this is the tie. Okay. At the sides. One at each side. So total number will be 2. So length given is 3.4 meter. So time means height 2 into 2 4, 3.4. Multiply this, you get the quantity as 13.6. Total weight uh, per unit comes out to be 3.8. So the total quantity will be 51.68. Next is ties inclined, inclined 50 into 8 mm. Ties inclined 50 into 8 mm. You can see here this is the inclined tie. One and there's another. This is the inclined tie two at each section. Total number will be four or 15 to 8 mm and 1.5 meter long. Another inclined tie is this. 
which is 15 to 8 mm and the length is 3.3 this will be one at each side so total number will be two so you can see here ties inclined ties inclined 15 to 8 mm for 1.5 meter long so you get the quantity uh, ties inclined 50 to 3.3 meter long uh, you get the quantity multiply with the weight per unit you get total uh, quantity as 20.46 okay next is the gusset plates okay so the gusset plates are of 8 mm thick they are provided at the apex at the base at the head of the strut head of strut okay at bottom of the struts incline tie and bottom suspenders and also the base plates these will be calculated in square meters then multiplied with the weight per unit so that you get the total quantity in kg so you can see now here the gusset plates these are the gusset plates at the top of the support at the bottom of the support at the top of the struts top of the struts okay at the bottom of the struts these are the gusset plates at the bottom of the okay so these are the gusset plates so we will be calculating uh, one by one so at the apex this is the first gusset plate which is one one number it is at the center of both the uh, sides so it it's one in number dimensions are 75 centimeter by 45 centimeter so at the apex this one gusset plate which is of 0.75 centimeter and 0.45 so you get the quantity as 0.338 meter square next the gusset plate at the base at the base you can see here this is the gusset plate at the base which is 70 centimeter by 45 centimeter okay so they are two in numbers one at each side so next gusset plate is at the head of the strut okay which is shown here that is 75 by 25 centimeters okay one at each side so this will be two next gusset plate is at the another head of the strut that is this okay which is 25 by 20 okay one here and one here so two at each side that means total number will be four next gusset plate is at the bottom of the strut so one is 45 by 32 this will be two in numbers totally and next gusset plate this gusset plate is 35 by 25 okay so this will also be two in numbers at next gusset plate at inclined tie so at inclined tie you have to consider this gusset plate also so this is 32 by 25 centimeter in dimension and at the bottom suspender you can see there are 25 by 20 centimeter dimensions so i've shown you all the gusset plates similarly shown in this sheet at the apex at the base and the struts and the bottom of the struts at inclined tie and at the bottom suspender so now adding all this we get the quantity as 2.216 meter square now this quantity multiplying with 8 mm thick in gusset plate uh, quantity weight per unit you get uh, from the steel table you get 62.8 multiplying the quantity with the weight you get the total quantity as 139.16 now next is the base plate which is 12 mm thick you can see here they have given the plan of the base plate uh, which is 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter by 12 mm thick so the dimensions of the base plate will be 0.3 by 0.3 okay and uh, the number of base plates will be one at each support so uh, both the sides it will be two so put two into point three into point three so you get the quantity multiplying with the weight per unit you get the total quantity now adding all the quantities of steel work all all these quantities adding all these 
okay you get total quantity as 573.91 kg okay now you have to also consider rivet to truss and purlin clips which will be 5% of 573.91 you get it as 28.69 kg next is rack bolts and of 40 mm there are four number of rack bolts okay so these these are the rack bolts you can see here the black dotted ones these are the rack bolts there they are two at each side so totally four numbers okay so quantity will be four and weight per unit from the steel table will be five so you get the total quantity as 20 20 kg so adding again these you get total quantity for one truss as 622.60 kg multiplying it with the total number of trusses that is five you get the total quantity as 3113 kg okay next uh, you need to cal we need to also consider the rafters okay at the eve of the end cable walls at four corners partly embedded in the um, 75 by 50 by 80 mm angle that is 1.5 meter long okay that is the extra width that's been provided uh, 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 beyond the supports so, okay the, uh, as i told you at the starting of the video that is the eaves that are provided okay so uh, so two at each side okay so extra width that has been provided that is ease which is beyond the uh, principal truss okay the extra width that is provided so the rain water that falls here doesn't fall directly on the support or wall and it moves away from the wall okay that is the extra line that is provided so it is 1.5 meter long one at each side okay one at each side of the truss okay so total number will be four uh, one actually one at each end so there will be two ends at each side so both the sides it will be four numbers length is 1.5 meter quantity will be six again weight per k unit from the steel table you get for, for 75 by 50 by 80 mm angle you get 7.4 total quantity will come out to be 44.4 kg next is purlins Purlins of 125 by 75 by 8 mm angle. Uh, so purlins will be running. So these are the purlins. Purlins will always be running uh, transfers to the direction of the principal truss. So I've shown you if this is the truss, okay? If this is the truss, they have given us the one side of the truss okay so now balance will be running transverse to the direction so this this dimension they have given us 21 point you can see here they have given it as 21 meters okay so balance the balance will be running transverse okay so there there will be my total number will be 12 uh, Pellins uh, length is 21 meter. You have to consider uh, 15 centimeter bearing at the end walls. So it will be length will be 21.3. So you can see in this section here, pollen they have shown 125 by 75 by 8 mm angle. So these are the pollen 1, 2. So let me count it from here 1, 2, 3, 4. 5 and 6. So 6 at each side. So that means totally there will be 12 pollens. 21.3 meter is the length. So you get the quantity as 255.6. Multiplying the quantity with the weight per unit from the steel table you get 3092.76. Next are the wind ties 32 by 6 mm. Okay. There will be again 2 wind ties. Length will be same. Okay, so wind tie, you can see here, wind tie 32 mm by 6 mm, okay, 6 mm. So this will also be running transverse to the direction of the principal truss. So uh, there, 
the length will also be 21.3 because assuming 15 centimeter bearing at the end walls one even the tie at each side so there will be totally two so you get the total quantity as for fine number of dresses are 6314.06 kg okay so that is how we calculate the quantity of steel truss steel work next is a Painting two coats over one coat of priming in steel work. Okay, painting for trusses. So again, here also we'll be calculating for one truss, then multiplying with the uh, uh, with the total quantity. Okay. So for painting. For painting, if you consider the section, okay, 75 and 75 by, if you consider the section, this to be 75 and this to be 50, okay, so 75, both the sides will be painted and this 50 side, both the sides will be painted, okay, so you have to multiply, uh, multiply, you have to calculate the perimeter of the section okay so for one truss section and dimensions are same for the steel works okay so for first one that is for principal rafter okay for principal rafter 75 by 50 by 8 mm angle uh, you have to calculate the perimeter and the perimeter will be 75 into 2 plus 50 into 2 okay <coughs> it will be so 75 plus 50 into 2 you get point uh, 0.25 meters okay so uh, total number is again number will remain same 2 into 2 7.6 meter length uh, we have calculated as in the steel work then you get the breadth as 0.25 this you how this how you get is 75 one side makes another side is 50 into 2 you get what 250 mm that is equal to 0.25 so you get the quantity in meter square as 7.6 meter square next is for this trot 75 by 50 by 10 mm again for both the sides of 75 mm angle next for both the sides of 50 mm angle you get the breadth as 0.25 the number and the length will remain same as we have calculated in the steel work only the breadth will change Okay, so next quantity is 65 by 45 by 8 mm angle. So both the sides of 65 mm angle and both the sides of 45 mm angle. So that will be 65 plus 45 into 2, you get 0.22. Next is central suspender 50 by 50. So 50 plus 50 into 2, you get 0 0.2. Okay, similarly for all the other angles, you get the quantity, uh, you need to calculate the breadth, multiplying the number, length and breadth, you get the total quantity in meter square. Okay. So for ties, tie angles, and also it will be seen that is 80 plus 6 into 2 divided by 2 uh, sorry 80 into 2 both the sides 50 into 2 and this will also be 8 into 2 so 50 plus 8 into 2 you get the breadth as 0 0.116 uh, you, uh, you need to add the quantities okay you have to calculate uh, before that you have to also calculate for the gusset plates so the gusset plates will also be remain same uh, like we have calculated in the steel work okay but the quantity will change because you will be painting both the sides of the gusset plate let me show you how so 
if this is the gusset plate, if you consider this gusset plate, okay, at the center or at the apex, there's one gusset plate, okay, but you will be painting this side of the gusset plate and the other side of the gusset plate as well. So, you will be painting two sides of the gusset plate. Okay, so whatever number we have calculated, so it will be 75 by 45, but whatever number we have calculated of the gusset plate will double. Okay, if it is at the apex, it, it was one for steel work, but here, since you are painting both the sides of the gusset plate, it will be, number will be two. Okay, and uh, at the base, there are two gusset plates, uh, one at each base, so the number will increase to you have to multiply by another two because you'll be painting the other side of the gusset plate also. Okay, so gusset plates at the apex. So whatever number we have uh, calculated in the steel work will double. So we have to multiply two in the numbers column. And then the dimensions of the gusset plate will also be remain same length and breadth. Okay, so quantity will come out to be uh, in meter square, when adding all the quantity, you get 19.68 meter square. Total of five trusses, you have to multiply it with five. You get 998.40 meter square. Next is purlins, 125 by 75 by 8 mm angle. Okay, purlins are 12, 21.3, and 0.4 is the breadth. Again, 125 plus 75 into 2, you get 0.4. Next is wing ties, 32 into 6 mm. So, 32 plus 6 into 2, you get 0 uh, 0.076. 4 numbers, 21.3 is the length. So, 3.24, you get the total quantity as 203.88 meter square. Total quantity of painting, 2 coats. The next quantity is galvanized corrugated iron GI roofing. All fittings, hook bolts, GI bolts, washers, etc. will be included. So, you can see here GI ridging and GI roofing. This roofing will be provided along this length. Okay, roofing will be provided along this length. So, the length will be 21.3 because you have to consider 15 centimeter bearing at the both ends. Okay, so GI roofing will be one, one at each side. So, both the sides total number will be two. Okay, um, and the uh, and the length of the GI sheet they have given us 7.8 meter. You can see here GI sheet length they have given us 7.8. 8 meter can you see here okay so also the dimensions will be 21.3 7.8 and two numbers next is gi region you can see here this region will be running uh, running at the vertices of the two trusses okay it will be running at the center at the vertices of the two, two trusses so uh, it will be calculated in running meters uh, so the length will be 21.3 again because to you will be considering 15 centimeter bearing on both the sides okay so the gi roofing it will be 2 21.3 7.8 get the quantity in meter square and gi region in running meters uh, square meters it's in running meters since it will be running at the vertices of the two triangles two trusses so that is how we can estimate the quantities. After estimating the quantities, you need to prepare an abstract of the estimated quantities by assuming suitable rates. The rates what I have shown in this abstract are just representative rates. Okay, so steel work quantity we have got as 63.14 quintal, rate is 700 per quintal, multiplying the rate into the quantity you get for the amount. Then painting two coats we have got the quantity of paint as 203.88 meter square, uh, it will be 10.4 per meter square, you get the quantity. Then galvanized corrugated iron GI roofing. Uh, we have got the quantity and multiply with the rate you get the amount similarly for all the quantities you get the total then you have to add three percent for contingencies two percent for work charge establishments and then grand total these are just representative rates thank you